Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. I think we're getting some sound now. And let's see. Run out. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing the sound. Okay. Okay, I think that we should be okay. So today, thank you for tuning in. Those of you who are on the replay, who are watching this sometime in the future probably, I hope that you can see my, hear my words and my lips matching up. Let's see, hello, hello. Let's see, probably I should put in a little bit of a delay. Let's see, just a few, maybe about, Testing, testing, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, I think that seems okay. And let's try a quick overlay there, just for a little bit. Okay, I think that we're getting ready to get started with Canva and a chat GPT AI. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna take that off. Let's go back, let's make sure our sound is okay. And are there any comments? Okay, so it looks like we're doing okay. I should check to be sure that we're live though, let's see. Okay, so we're still live and I think we have sound now. I think before we had lost the sound Okay, so if you can see my screen, welcome, I'm Dr. Marjorie Lewis, and I'm gonna show you how I use Canva in studying and learning new things, whether it be history, physics, other types of mathematics, formulas, whatever. Canva can help you with this. So you should be able to see my screen and you should be able to see Canva. And when I sign into Canva, Canva has both free as well as professional paid options. What you can do is, if you're not certain, you want the professional, you can start with a free version. And a lot of the elements are available to you on the free plan. So give that a try. And as you begin to see, you can tell which things are free and which things are, are pro or professional and require the paid version. And if you see enough of the paid things that you like, you can just go ahead and pay. It's not that expensive per month anyway. All right, so when I open up Canva, I will come to the home page and this is the name Memory Rainbow Academy. It has the name of your channel there. You have your home where you have your documents, whiteboard, presentation, social media, if you wanna do something with YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, you can go into here, videos, print, websites, and more. Lots of things, you can even get a free website on Canva if you'd like to set that up. I'm in the process of trying to set one up myself. Now, you can go into documents and we'll, we're gonna go into documents that way we can work with chat, with their type of chat GPT, uh, an AI that they have, which is pretty interesting. You have your presentations, banners, you can create thumbnails and so forth in here. So you can use it for a lot of things. You have templates and you click on the templates. It brings up lots of ideas that you can customize to your heart's content. You can change it, make it your own. You don't want to use the exact same template that someone created, even though you have the right to use it. Canva wants you to change it, to use your own colors, your own style, your own words, and so forth. So you don't want to reprint the exact template, right? Templates there just as a guide. 
and so you can run through that. They have logos, they have flyers if you want to make a flyer. If you want to make Instagram stories, they have it set up for you here, giving you ideas and like a start posters, different types of videos, t-shirts, documents, thumbnails, Facebook covers, store resumes, business cards, letters, and just a host of different things. And if you look at templates, you can break it down to business, social media. See, hopefully you can read this, social media. And if you click on it, it opens up and gives you more of the same Instagram post. You open up and you'll get a lot more of, the, of that. Each one opens up to its own area. Photos, if you want to try out photos that you can add to your document, you can come in here and look through an array of hundreds and hundreds and thousands probably of different photos. You can take a look at icons. Some of these are really nice. You can spruce up your presentations with these icons in here. And some of these are pretty neat. That's cool. Look at that. Very nice. Okay, so these are pretty nice symbols that you can use to help you learn. Many of these you can add to your formulas and to pretty much anything that you're interested in learning. All right, um, there are brand templates in here. You have your own that you can create your own once you create it. Candle will save that for you. They even have a content planner, a calendar. You can plan certain things that you want to be done and Canva has it set up now where I think it can even post to some of the or alert you so that it can po you can post to one of these websites, these social media websites. They have apps which are really nice. Lots of things. Here's the text to image, one of the ones I think I want to take a look at, which is very nice. Emojis. So just a ton of opportunities here. Markups, these are if you want to publish like t-shirts, they have it all set up for you. All you have to do is throw in your designs or your text messages or whatever it is you want to see on your t-shirt. You can put that on there and you can have it even printed up through Canva and they can send it to you. All right, so let me go back to home and I like to start with a basic document and here I hit the return button click let's see you can let's see here let me actually Okay, there it is, all right. If you click on the plus button, that's what you click on, it says magic right. And this is how you can get the AI, which is a type of chat GPT, to answer questions. So if you have a, a question, you can say, one of the things, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to cover our medical topics. It doesn't like to deal with that particular area. And being a physician, that would have been really cool. But it can answer some nutrition things for you. So you can say, what is maybe the difference between, let's, I don't know if it'll do it, but, um, It may not do this one. Let me see. Oh, should we put in there intermittent fasting and Mediterranean diet, something like that.
Okay, so it says here, intermittent fasting diets are both, both of them are effective ways to achieve better health and wellness. Intermittent fasting is a pattern of eating that involves alternating periods of no food or very low calorie intake with periods of normal eating. In contrast, the Mediterranean diet is a way of eating that focuses on consuming mostly plant-based foods, such as fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, as well as healthy fats, olive oil, fish, and so forth. While both approaches are beneficial, the main difference is in how they're structured. Intermittent fasting is more structured is a more structured approach that requires careful planning and tracking your meals, while the Mediterranean diet is more of a lifestyle choice that encourages consuming healthy, balanced meals, while limiting processed and fried foods. Ultimately, the best approach for achieving better health and wellness is to find the one that works best for you and your lifestyle. So that was kind of good. It gave you some idea. Okay. All right, so let's see. Let's go ahead and maybe we can ask another question. Let's see. So what is most popular study technique Let's see if it says anything okay it's taken its time there so while it's trying to decide it's not as quick, I think. Uh-oh. We run into a technical problem. Try again in a few moments. Ooh, that's not good. Technical problem. Let's see. Let's see if you say something like, oh, you know what, maybe I should erase all of this and start scratch from scratch. And let's see name a few study techniques. For student to learn by. Let's see what it says here. So it's, let's see, hopefully it's not down. Seems like a lot of these systems are being used so frequently that the, the poor AI is being overwhelmed by all the questions. Oh, look at that. They've run into a problem. Oh man, that's terrible. Okay, so we're not getting, let me try that one. Let's see if there's anything else I could request. Okay, let's see. What is the, and this is the first time I've ever had any problems with it. Go figure, right? What is the formula for the volume of a, a cylinder? What is the formula for the volume of a cylinder? Let's see if it was, if it'll give me any kind of math tips. Oh, okay, we did come up with something, okay. The, vo the formula for the volume of a cylinder is V equals pi R H. Okay, where R is the radius, H is the height, pi is 3.14, hope this helps. Okay, great, excellent. So speaking of that, let me take a look at, let me see if I can go over here and find let me see if it was in here. 
Okay, cylinder. Okay, here is how I use Canva. So you can use a combination of both. So if you're not sure what the volume is of a cylinder, how to calculate it, you can, here you have the top. You can go into their AI, automated intelligence, and I don't know if it has a particular name like ChatGPT, but it's something similar to that. So sometimes I might refer to it as that, but we know it's not exactly Chat. So it gives you the formula right here, and you can go back now and you can try to create it. So I actually did this yesterday, and on Canva I was able to find that, going to the elements, here on this side, I th hope you, you you can see this. This is the design elements, uploads. You can upload things of your own, which I did, your own pictures and symbols. You can go into this elements and you can see lots of graphics that's available and you can type in what you want. So I think I had typed in volume, cylinder volume, I don't know, the uh, cylinder. Let's see how it came up. Oh, there it is. So you can simply see how it came up right here. Can you see that? Okay, and you can click on it and see how it brought in a copy of this exact same one that I used. So we don't need it, so you can just hit the delete button on your computer. Then once you have that, so you have two ways. So first you go in and you, you find out what the formula is. You can put, or you can put it right into this search box of the elements of Canva. So here you can get your math formulas this way. Just simply type it in, it comes up. And then you start to use the system that I have of the memory rainbow to pull in symbols from the uploads and you create this, this picture of yours. So volume is V, and so that represents this uh, violin that's basically playing a song. And I turned this cylinder this way because it was hard to get it, everything to fit going across horizontally. So I just sort of turned it on its side. And then you have pi, which I decided to use just as a regular pi, which I thought was kind of cute. And then the radius, which is half of a diameter going across this way, rep is represented by the silver robot, which is number 18. So we, the silver robot is here. And then you have the little bird, which is represented by two. It's an orange bird. And it's right here on the head of this robot. And you can see pi r squared times h. h is represented by Hegesis horse. Hegesis is like Pegasus of the Greek mythology, except I changed the name to h for a Hegesis, and it's the winged flying horse. So you have them interacting here together so that you can keep this image in your mind. I like to compare it to this one, which is the circumference of a circle. Let me move the cat out the way. Let me put this here. This is the circumference of a circle, so you can do the same thing. You can go to chat. Let's see. Let me go in here. Let's see if it can do that. Let me ask it. What is the formula? for the so, oh what happened there oh my gosh oh you know what it maybe I have to erase the whole thing it keeps Let's take get rid of it okay let me try that again you know it might be faster just do this. I'm going to go up here. Okay, what is the formula for the circumference of a circle? Okay. I'm going to, let me see if I can copy that and go here. Put it in here. Okay, perfect. And then hit the return button, see what it says. 
Okay, so we're waiting for an answer. Chat GPT would have been a lot faster, I will say that much. But it does most of the time give you an answer. So the formula for the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, where r is the radius. And uh, find the circumference, simply multiply radius by 2 times pi. Okay, so 2 pi r. So we can go back to this. Here it is, 2 pi r. So you can get the information there, and then you can request the circumference. You can go into Canva, and you can also say, let me see, let me see if I can just type it in. There it is, and there's a copy of it here. So this is a way that if you're studying and, and you, you're not sure, it's, a, it's another way of, of getting your information. You can also Google it, but Canva is nice because not only are you Googling it, but you're getting the symbols and you're getting the rights to use that symbol, whereas you're on Google, you're not really sure if you should be able, if you can use some of those symbols because you can get yourself into trouble, especially if you're making a YouTube video and you want to be able to use the symbols. You know, someone could put a claim on those symbols so I'm do doing a lesson right now. I feel comfortable using, showing you the symbols on Canva because Canva has given me the right to use this, you know, because I have a professional account so I can show you how to pull this up. So if you're studying and, you know, you can feel at ease using these symbols in your lesson plan. So. That's the exact same one that I have. So you, I'm just showing you that you can get it, the information from the AI, and then you can also verify it inside of Canva by typing in the same prompt. You can pull up that information. And then you go about creating the art so that you can remember this by. Now C is represented by the cat. And, and you can tell your story. The story is what makes everything brilliant, right? You have your location and you have your story that you, you've got this scene where you've got this cat is creeping up on the bird, right? The orange bird, which is represented by two. And then you've got your pie, which is your pie here. R for the robot, right? So in your mind, you see the cat creeping up on this bird. The bird is eating the pie, and you imagine that the robot has his hands out, and he's the one holding the pie, okay? I'm not a great artist. I'm just this doodling on Adobe's Illustrator. That's how I created some of these. This bird is actually, I think, from Canva, because usually when I make the symbol, I put my number on it. So this probably was something that I just borrowed from Canva. I do have another bird, and, but I wanted something a little smaller, so I've been using this one, and I'm going to make something similar for myself. All right. So these two symbols, I was thinking about it, and they're similar. So you see how the cat sneaks up on the, on the bird, right, to create the circumference of the circle? Well, take a look at what the bird does. The bird flies off, and look where it goes. The bird flies off when you want to do the area of the circle. It flies off to, to get away from the cat, and it jumps, I think of it as jumping on the head of the robot that's there. So it, it jumps, it leaves the pie, it jumps there, and I'm going to bring the pie. Let me see if I can. Let's put that behind. Yeah, okay. So imagine that the robot is still holding the pie in his hand, and the bird that was here eating this pie in the circumference formula now jumps back up on top of it and creates a square, right? So radius is now squared. So now you have area, so your apple pie, you know, turns into radius square. So you've got the pie and the radius square. So if you put these two together, you can actually learn them together. And the more you group things together, the more it will stick in your mind. So I think that's actually fabulous. So I would definitely go ahead and keep this information in my head. So this is one of the ways that the AI is helping you. Now, as a student, if, if you're a student, which most people who would tune into this probably are, I don't think that you should feel bad or intimidated by using an AI. An AI is no different than a teacher. I look at the AI as a virtual assistant, a teacher, a long distance teacher that can help me to learn. I'm still putting the information in my head because I want to be 
able to learn it and to regurgitate this information even when I don't have the AI present. But instead of going to a classroom and sitting there with 30 students, if all 30 of us raise our hands, we're never going to learn. You know, think of the time involved to, for one teacher to answer 30 questions in her classroom. If every 30 people in that classroom, the hour would be gone. It would take her more than a minute to probably answer each question. So it's impossible for some learners, you have some that are visual, some that are auditory, and some that are slow learners, and you have those who are rapid learners and get bored easily. So in a classroom with so much, much diversity, it's impossible for the teacher to take care of each individual student. And AI can be a teacher for you and can substitute for the teacher so that everybody can work at their own pace. That's how I look at it. And I don't think that the world should say, well, you know, something horrible is going to happen because we have the AI. It didn't. We've had teachers all our lives, and we've sat there, you know, copying everything that they write down on the black that they tell us, and on the, or they write it on the blackboard, and we're just copying it in our notes, going home and hoping that we copied it fast enough. Some people will type faster, some people will write faster, some people take good notes, some people take terrible notes. So it's kind of unfair because everyone is trying to keep up with the style of this one teacher. And you go home and you go, man, I wish I had had the, the guts or I had had the opportunity to go to the teacher and clarify something that she said. Many times you can't do it because why? Either you don't have the time or you're embarrassed to admit to, to your colleagues who appear to understand it, that you didn't quite get what she said. Maybe you were distracted at the moment. The way she said it, it didn't quite click. Or they're learning at home. Some people have parents or scientists, you know, members of NASA. They, they have genius parents. They can help them with their homework at home or brothers or sisters or tutors even. And you might be somebody, you know, the child of a single mom and you're at home by yourself while she's working to, to pay the bills, and you don't have anyone to help you. You now have an AI that can help you answer some of those questions and clarify the outline. The teacher's job is to set an outline to say that this is the English class, this is journalism, this is science. Okay, so my camera will periodically flash on and off because for some reason it's set up to reset itself every, I think, 15, 20 minutes. So when that happens, I'll just pause for a second and it will come back. So don't be alarmed when that, when my face disappears. It's just the, the, the Canon camera does that. Now, so as I was saying, you students should use the AI, but they should use it as a tool, as a teacher that they can take home to clarify the subset of things that the teacher wants them to know. There, you've got that chapter. Let me just turn this on. Let's see. Okay, sorry about that. So the teacher's job is to outline the, the chapter that you need to learn. And your job is to go home and kind of tease that out and start writing it out and outlining it and making your notes more personable, creating your mind palace, using your symbols from the memory rainbow to make it easier for you to hold on to it. So on test day, you don't have to sweat. All right. So I don't think you should fear using the AI because everybody else is using it. And even if they tell you that they're not, don't necessarily believe it. Trust me, it's out there and parents are going to get it for their kids. Even if the parent, the kids can't put it on their personal account, it'll be on their parents account because you see parents are just as invested. Many of them in their kids getting into Harvard and Yale and and they're going to get their kids whatever they need 
to succeed. So if you can use it, I would go ahead and use it, but learn the information because you still need it up here in your brain. It's not enough for it to be in the brain of the AI. Google can't help you when you sit down to take a test. Google can't help you at work. Google can't help you to do surgery on somebody. They can help you learn the skill, but you have to apply that skill. So that's what I do. So you can go in here and just give you an example, if, even if you don't use Canvas AI, if you want to use ChatGPT or any other Jasper or whoever to help you write and to come up with information, find ways to apply it so that your personal brain will absorb it. And that's basically what I wanted to show you here today, that you can use this system. All right, so that's really nice. And yesterday I did go over very quickly how to do conversion formulas. There are plenty of them out there that you need to learn. Simplest one I have is one inch is 2.54 centimeters, and five inches, the average is about 13 centimeters, might have been closer to 12.7. So what I do is I take this orange bird, we're going to see, because we see two a lot <laughs> in formulas, right? And you've got your orange bird, and you have 5-4. So what you do is you can uh, you have an option of putting a period here between the bird and this is like a staff or a rod that the prophets use because the 50 series, and I don't wanna take too much time, but let me show you really fast. If you're not familiar, you can go ahead and Let's see if my chart is in here. Okay, let me go ahead and open this with, I use QuickTime Player. This is how, this is also on the website on YouTube. So if you wanna see how I set up the chart so and why I'm using these symbols, if they don't make sense as I'm explaining it to you today, is because I've done several of these webinars and have talked a lot about how the system works. But for those who might see this in the future, take a look at this chart and, it, and it's set up with 12, I'm sorry, 10, 10 columns here, right? And you've got each one starts with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And it has the, it is, associated with the letters of the alphabet in order. Everything is very ordered. You have 1 to 10 and you have A to J, right? And of course, A is the first letter and J is the 10th letter, just like F is the sixth letter. Uh, D is the fourth letter and so forth. H is the eighth letter. And each letter is associated with a symbol. And up to 26, we have A to Z. So each of these animals and symbols and power heroes that I use in my system, as well as in a book that I'm writing, are all corresponding in order. And that's what makes it so nice, is to have everything organized in order. So you have an apple, which is like Red Adam, and over here is five is the elephant, which sometimes I use the blue eagle. and that is for Eve. So you have Mother Eve and Father Adam, Adam and Eve, that whole story. A lot of these are very biblical. A lot of the symbols, I drew them from the Bible, which I was very familiar with as I grew up. So a lot of it makes sense to me because I'm very familiar with the Bible. And so we have the bird here. Sometimes I call it Bible bird, right? So it's an orange bird, the cat, the yellow cat here, Power Heroes cat. You have the doctor is associated with this green dog from Mars, right? And and one other thing is Mars, I use, why, why Mars? Mars is the fourth planet from the sun. So Earth is what? The third planet from the sun. You know, Venus is, is the second, so forth. So you've got, I try to kind of organize things so that they would make sense when you're learning various things. And I have F is for the Firefox, G is for the giraffe, H is for Hegesis, 
right? That's the winged horse. I is for the white ibis. These are these beautiful Florida birds. And J is for the black jaguar, right? And then you can move on very quickly. I don't want to take too much time to go over the same thing each day, but I just thought I'd do a quick one. Going from 11 to 20, you start off with the Red King. 12. Now, these are, are double digits. So you have 12 is the lion, 13 is the monkey or moon, um, N, 14 is ninja, O is for the owl, that would be the blue owl or the oracle of O. P's for the peacock, for the prince and princess of peace, brothers and sisters. Q is for the queen, that's number 17. Robot, which we see within our cir circumference and our area formula, represents 18. Star is 19. And tiger is 20. So we keep going, and I'll show you what I, I just want to show you how I made this transition here. So 21 to 26 ends the regular alphabet for, for the English language. So here you have 21 is a unicorn, 22 is a violin. We saw the violin, right? This is where it comes from. The, the yellow wolf, 23. And 24 is the X view, which is kind of like a power hero. And this X view is a type of binoculars that I sort of pulled together because it can see through things and so forth. Down here, you have, let me I have to pull back there. You have, that's the blue Yeti, right? And yesterday is actually the name of the power hero. I should have written the word Yeti, because, but I had yesterday written down initially before I put in the blue Yeti. Yesterday, she is a power hero, and she has the power to see everything that happened the day before. So her name is Yesterday. And Zebra over here, okay, is the purple zebra, and that's also a woman who, this is the animal that represents her and the number is 26. Now, interestingly enough, I will say very quickly that though our alphabet ends at Z, I think it should have gone to 29. If it had rounded it off, it would have made my life a lot easier and yours easier because then I could start with 30 and just do 10s. It would be 30, 40, 50, 60. See that? So the way this is, it, they didn't give a letter value to 27, 28, and 29. And I decided since I invented my own system, I'm going to go ahead and invent the letter for 27 it becomes BG, a composite letter. So if you want to, as you're writing words, you can use now letters to substitute for a number like 27. So two is B and G is seven, just like we had before. And two is B again, the bird, and H is the horse, which is eight. Okay, so B H, and together the composite number becomes 20, letters B H for 28, B for two, and I for nine. So for 29, the composite letter is B I. All right, so by 20, right? And you can even think of the hand saying by. You start remembering some of them. You don't have to learn them all. I don't even use all of them. I mostly use the symbol. And the glove, like I said, is the white glove. The power hero, his name is Change. And the reason is because he will change into anything that he touches. He becomes whoever he touches. That's why he wears the white glove. And I always, like I said, think of this white glove on the top of Mount Everest because it is 29,032 feet. So that white glove is on top of, that's how you remember, you know, things that you should know, which helps you build your knowledge base and improve your IQ as you're thinking about things. Anybody can say, well, how, how high is Mount Everest? That's something that you should know because it's the tallest mountain in the entire world, right? And you should know it's 29,032 feet. And so the 32 is this little orange. And we're gonna go into the trees and you'll see the little orange tree that's at the base of the mountain. So for me, it's very easy to remember. We start with the 30 series, and let me tell you about this particular one. Any number that ends in zero, of course, takes the color black, right? And 
here is the letter, the composite letter that I came up with, C ampersand. Now the reason, there is no letter corresponding to the number zero. Zero is a number. We use it all the time and it should have had, we should have had number letters for 27, 28, and 29, and we should have had it for zero. So I think our system is remiss in not assigning these single letters so I went ahead and made a composite letter for any number that ends in Okay, there the 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 camera just reset itself again as I told you it would do. So the ampersand represents zero in any time you see it coming into these double digits. So three goes with C just like it would the yellow cat C. And so it forms tr the tree number 30, right? And that's the morning tree, that's the mother tree. You have a series of tree, they're tree sisters, and this is the mother of the trees. Number 30 is the mother, and these are, she has nine daughters, right? And she's the morning tree, morning tree, and she's the mother tree to all of these. And the, the interesting thing about her is that she's a tree from the Garden of Eden, right? She came from the tree, not from the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, but from the tree of life. She's the daughter of the tree of life. And when Adam and Eve, part of my story, I'm just kind of giving away here, left the Garden of Eden, one of the trees left with them, and that was Mother Tree. And so she became the mother as she seeded her, her tree seeds into the new world. She gave birth to the red tree, the orange, the yellow, green, blue, purple, golden tree, silver tree, and white tree, right? And you'll see lots of stories about how they go around helping humanity, heal humanity, right? They become um, offsprings of the tree of life. So their mother is the black tree, and she is the one who she was mourning the loss of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, and she vowed to follow them and to take care of their offspring, to take care of humanity. So it's a beautiful story with the tree people, and you'll see how they've gone through many, many trials to keep the human and the humanoid race alive. So they're down here, and they have letters, composite letters, too. I just went ahead and said, what the heck, if I had to do it for 27, 28, 29, you know, and the zero, I, it's just a, the same system. Nothing fantastic. All you, if you know the system, you just simply apply it. So you've got three for C, one for A, three for C, two for B. Same thing all the way, th three for C, seven G, three for C, 9i, right? So ci becomes 39. That's the, the white tree. And then you move on to the 40 series. So now we, we get into the series, first the trees, and then now the sheep. You're going to have 10 sheep, black to white, and, and the sheeps are represented by shepherds, the biblical theme of shepherds tending to their sheep at night, sort of like during the time of um, biblical days of, of Christ, and then they later on get promoted to be guardians of the universe. So the, I use the sheep, let me move over here so you can see, 41 to 49, uh, these sheep now remember I'm not an artist so this is just my own little rendition of what a sheep looks like so if you've got better art I'm happy to take a look at it send them to me it would be very nice I'll be happy to show them to people and we can compare and see who who is the best artist I know I'm gonna lose I'm always gonna be the last one there but I've never taken an art class so I don't have to feel bad it's pretty clear right okay so you have from red to, to white, 
as your sheep now. Then we move into the 50 series very quickly. I'm almost done with this. Just wanted to show you real quick. 51 through 59 represents the prophets and they have their staff or either, it's either staff or a rod or a long stick. It's not the one with the curve that you use for the sheep, right? So just don't get that mixed up. It's the straight one. It's a little crooked staff for, that the prophets use, really, really long ones. And they're just walk, it's like a walking stick that they're using. And they're not with the sheep, so don't, you know, use, don't get those two mixed up. And they have colors the same way from black all the way to white. And they have the same letter system as we did before, 57. The golden prophet would be EG right here. Okay, so that's basically it. Then the last one I had, or the 60s, I didn't even finish them here, but it's the same setup fifth, um, from the black lantern to the white lantern. You know, you've got the red, the green, the purple, the golden lantern, silver and white lantern, and so forth. The same thing, and they also have the same letter system, right? And it comes from the biblical theme of the the five wise and five foolish maidens or virgins and when when the bridegroom arrives, five of them had oil in the lamp, five didn't. So it tells you about preparedness, teaches you about the value of, of getting ready and be prepared for whatever opportunity comes along in life, right? So the lantern, I've used that, and you'll see I'm going to be using that very lantern in one of the stories that I'm going to be showing you that you can use in Canva. So just to give you a quick rundown, you can find this chart inside of YouTube, right? Just go on the channel for the Memory Rainbow at Memory Rainbow Academy and you should be able to find the chart there. And if you need, want to, you can send me, email me your email and I can download, send it to you. I'm gonna be setting that up very soon. So I'm kind of like a one-man show, so there's a lot of things that I'm kind of doing besides the camera, the lights, learning all of these different things, learning Canva, Adobe, this, I'm a physician, so I, this is totally new to me. I've never operated any of this stuff in my life, and just because of an injury that I had, I'm sort of stuck at home and not at work right now because I'm healing from compression, fracture of my back, fell off a 13-foot ladder, fractured, shattered my heel, fractured my ankle. So I'm, you know, I went from a wheelchair and I've just been walkers and all kinds of stuff. So I can get around a little bit better now, but I'm still limping, still not completely healed. So, but this is great because it gives me an opportunity to do something that I've been fooling around with for a few years. And now I had a chance to kind of complete the, the set of system and the technique and I really enjoy it. And I'm actually learning and I wish I had completed this years ago so that I could really use it even more efficiently. So let me go back here to Canva where we were looking at how to use it. Here is, I went over a little bit of this yesterday, but it's always good to review. Space repetition is really good that you can wait, you know, several days once you learn it really well. You don't need to keep looking at this. You can, but it, you know, while you're learning the system, yes, you know, kind of rehearse it in your mind so that you understand what you're doing. And then as time goes on, you can rehearse it maybe once a week or once a month because the system is very strong and it will stick in your mind very, very nicely. And these are parameters when, when a patient comes in and they have pancreatitis, right? We have some criteria that we use to determine how well they're doing on admission and how they're doing within two days, within 48 hours. This tells the doctor a lot about that per, how well that person is doing. His pancreatitis is a very serious matter. And pancreas is, I think I said the stomach before, it's really the abdomen, though lay people might call it the stomach, of course, it's your abdomen. And you have the pancreas, you've got the liver and all this stuff here inside of you. And one of them, the pancreas that we don't think a lot about, but 
if you damage it, you will be in some serious pain. One of the most painful abdominal problems you could have is pancreatitis. So don't mess with the pancreas. Don't over drink. People who are drink too much alcohol can really stress that pancreas and we can see alcoholic pancreatitis and you can even have gallstone pancreatitis, right? This one is the non-gallstone type, most likely alcohol related for most of these. And when a person comes in and we look at their age, if they're over 55, if they have sugar over 200, um, LDH, lactic acid dehydrogenase over 350, serum aspartate here, this is like a liver enzymes, enzyme, and your white blood cell count greater than 16. So for day one, you wanna kinda of remember that. So I came up with a nice little system. Uh, 55, I use, these are the profits. So I have a blue profit here with a blue rod or a staff, whichever you wanna call it, or, or long crooked stick. And he's got it there, it's blue. So anybody over the age of 55 represented by this blue profit, which is 55, needs to be manage very carefully. It's a not a good sign. And your blood sugar over 200. 200, you don't know that yet when I get to finishing the chart. I have it all in my head and I have it written down, but I haven't finished the chart. 200 is the airplane series. It's um, supersonic, kind of like spaceship type of airplane that belongs to the students of what I call the Majo Federation, which is part of the book where you have these power heroes who are working to save the planet from pipers or invaders of Earth. So these airplanes are being used by the members of the Federation. And so you can think of this as the black it's the same same system. If it ends in zero, it's black. One, it's red. So they have about 10 different airplanes. So the zero is the 200 one. 200, think of the, the windshield of the plane being crystallized just like it would be with ice. Instead, it's sugar crystals and you've got all these sugar. Find, you see these little white dots, sugar falling off the plane. So that's going to be sugar over 200. You're looking for that. 350, here is the 300 series, 350. So 300 represents the Garden of Eden, what happened to it after Adam and Eve left. It becomes a globe and God gets rid of them and he assigns new angels or new gardeners to guard the garden. And there are like 10 of them. So 300 is the black gardener all the way to 309 is the white gardener. And so that's where the series ends right there. And then 50 is a number composite there, which would be the Black Prophet, right? And so the Black Prophet is represented by this black staff or rod. And 300 is represented by the rose. I use roses to represent the garden. Instead of trying to create a whole garden, I decided to use roses to represent the garden and to represent the Garden of Eden and that globe that's floating in the sky. So you, when you see the rose, think of this acid being poured on, imagine it belonging to this blue prophet when he first came in, you're right, and in his blue rod, he, the acid is poured in, it would say it was once blue, blue rose, and now it becomes black. And the rod becomes black. Imagine all this acid from this flask is being poured on this rose, and it turns everything black. So keep that in your mind, this black rose and the black staff. So you go from blue and you've got the airplane, you've got the black rose and the black staff. And then you have another airplane inter um, after that one. This is the liver enzyme AST that gets elevated because of the alcohol affecting the liver. And imagine this supersonic plane that's going around in a circle with this, with this black rod, right? That it's spinning about um, a glass of alcohol. It's like mixing it up in the air. Just, just get that image in your air of it's going around and you're holding on to almost like a bird, the stick, and it's mixing the alcoholic drink. And that's just something, an image that you can hold in your mind. 
Then you have down here for white cell, number 16, we always think of the numbers. We just kind of say, what's a white cell count? And somebody will probably just use the first two numbers. That's, that's pretty common. So if you get up to 16, you know, you're like almost double what's normal. So your peacock, which is the Prince of Peace, or the Princess of Peace is the power he heroes. This peacock is the purple peacock is represented by the number 16, and you see I have the white cell count here. So you've got this image going from the prophet, you've got the airplane, you've got the black rose and the staff, and you've got another airplane, so you've got two airplanes. One has got the sugar crystals and one has got the alcohol that's spinning around, and then you come down here to this purple peacock. So you keep that in your mind, and these are things that you can get from Canva. And all you have to do is go into here, get, hit that to get rid of that, and you can ask for an airplane. And see, you see, you click on see all over here, and this is an area that you can close it if you want, and you can have a larger area to work. Or if you want to, these are the elements. You just click on it, and it brings you right back here. Here are all your airplanes, and you can pick, and they have different colors. Some of them allow you to change the color, which is really nice. Let me see if this is one. Here's one, and you see how you come up here, and you see this block, this black. You can click on that itself, and it brings you to the document colors. And you can change that to a green airplane, red airplane, white airplane, whatever you want. You can also crop it. You can flip it if you want it to go in the opposite direction. You just click on this, and you can go for vertical or horizontal. And see, now your airplane is heading back that way. If you want it to go vertically, you can turn it upside down, right? And you can change the direction by grabbing onto this little symbol down here of these double arrows and you can get it to go up. You can turn it in any direction, move it around all you want. So it makes it very easy as you're creating your stories. You can do whatever you want with it. It's very nice, okay? So and let me click off of that to clear it. You click on this plus button here. I think, let me see something again. Airplane, let's see something. Let me do that one more time, because there was this, okay. So you can click on this other icon over here to also make some changes in the color. Okay, you can apply, hit apply. Oh, that one didn't do it. Let's see. Orientation, static. Okay, if you want free versus pro, you can apply filters. Once you apply the filters, I think is when they, it changes. If you only want free things or if you only want pro, you can apply that. Static versus animated images. You can kind of decide what you want and click on these things and apply the filters. And just try that out okay then so the next day you come along and in 48 hours the person needs to be reevaluated and you're looking at other things like what's the calcium level call from the white sorry about that so you've got calcium level if it drops to eight, then that's a bad sign. So you see Hegesis is here. And you have Hegesis is here, and it is eight, represented by the number eight we see here. It's got this calcium this bone in its mouth and cheese, all of these things and milk represents calcium. So I aimed it downward, right? Just so that it gives you the re re 
recollection that it's not increasing, but it's actually decreasing. So that's what's important. Then we look at the Jaguar, is the hematocrit, which is a concentration of your blood. It's falling by 10 percent. So you imagine the Jaguar fall, have maybe a head wound, and it's bleeding, and it's losing blood. So your blood concentration has diminished by 10 percent. And the reason you know it's 10 percent, not 20 percent, in these multiple choice questions, like I said, these percents will come up, and you, you're trying to figure out, is it 10, 20, 30 percent, right? Your oxygen is dropping. This, this is the partial pressure of oxygen in the art arterial system. And if it drops below 60, that's bad. Here I use the lantern. Remember we talked about that? That's number 6060, ends in black. And I got these bubbles from Canva and added it to it as it heading downward, you can see oxygen sort of, think of oxygen floating up. So when you think of the black lantern, in this 48 hours, you're going to know the number is 60 because it could be any other number, but you have to choose the exact number, right? And then you come down here to the BUN. Now, the first three, it's heading downward, right? These, these are things that are dropping, and the next three are things that are increasing that are just as bad, but they're heading in the opposite direction. This is a kidney function where you have the BUN is five which is elevated, right? It shouldn't be more than like one or so, so it's, it's gone. It shouldn't increase by more than that. And so it's gone up to increase above the, what it normally is by five. So you have the elephant, represents the number five, or Eve, and I put a bun there, like the elephant is holding the bun in its trunk. And so you've got that in your mind, ba negative base excess is four milliequivalents per liter. And so the number four, just to, rem or you need to, you'll see this, you know, it's not so much that they're gonna trick you with the milliequivalents, it's gonna be probably just the number, is it four, is it five? Just that simple one digit off, you can get it wrong. And that's why multiple choice questions are so difficult because it's just a small change that these two things look so similar. And to, to distinguish them, you need to have a system so that your memory will remember, well, I remember there was a green dog there, so it's not five, right? There was the elephant is already doing the thing with the bun, right? And then sequestration of fluids, you have fluids being lost in the body cavities and different areas. And if it's greater than six liters, that's a bad sign, and that's represented by the purple Firefox, so the number is six, and I put like a bag of fluids there just to kind of click in my mind that we're talking about fluids. So all you have to do is get these images. I would get the images in mind. You've got the Hegesis horse, you've got the, the black jaguar, and you've got the black uh, lantern that's going downward, right? And then you've got the elephant, that's going up and then you have the dog and then you have the Firefox. So you can remember those and you can go back and forth with these and you've got the airplanes over here. Let me get rid of this one, it didn't need to be there. All right, so you've got the two airplanes being separated by the Garden of Eden, what's going on there with the black rose and the black staff and the acid being poured on a rose, turning it black, turning the staff black. So that's very easy to remember. That's 350, so that's 350, right? You, anytime you think of the purple peacock, right at the bottom, you've got the white cells, and so you know it, the number is 16. You've got the blue prophet, you know the age is 55, because that can be easily changed to 65, and you'd be like, was it 65? Or was it 55? Or was it 45? That's how multiple choice questions get you. 200, the glucose is a 200, or was it 300? But if you have the symbol to correspond to the number, it won't be that easy to trick your, to be tricked when you're doing these multiple choice questions. Okay. So that's basically how I do it. And so you can continue working with a number of different formulas learning how they work, and you can have the AI, you can go in and ask it anything you want, 
and if this one doesn't work, you can try to get on chat GPT. I think they're going to have a paid version. They may already have the paid version out. I have used it in the past, the free version, but I haven't really used it that much because I've been working so much on my own system. But it, it is phenomenal, and it does answer some great questions, and will even give you some medical um, answer some medical questions as well. I do see it being used in hospitals, emergency rooms, you know, primary care offices will probably start using it as it gets more and more vetted. It was able to take uh, an exam that was given to it, a board exam, national board exam for doctors by a, a number of doctors, and it passed. Okay, it didn't get a 100, and there are some areas where it wasn't as good. Some of the, but it was, it was really, really impressive. And this is the first time it's being tried, and it only has information up to, to I think 2021. So as that information gets caught up with, with 2023, it's going to blow our mind and the knowledge base as we begin to feed it, medical encyclopedias. There's the camera again. It's resetting. Okay. So as it, it gets fed more and more information, more doctors get involved. The Board of Medicine may get involved and may want to utilize it in the future. In the future, we may have ChatGPT administering a, an exam for us. But I think it's a great tool, and I don't think that doctors or anyone should be intimidated by it. We have to be careful and monitor it so that people don't abuse it and use it to cause harm to others. But there's always going to be people that will use everything that you give them for bad, and there will always be people who will only use it for good. So. There's nothing to, to fear. We still always have more good people, I think, in the world than bad. So that's what's important. And I'm very, I really enjoyed this session today. And I'm going to come back again and we can go over more ways to use Canva. And let me get back over here. Like I said, go ahead and get yourself an account and you can start learning how to use it. And I will go ahead and keep, maybe next time we'll go into some of these social media accounts and we'll take a look at, let's see, if you go in here, you can, uh, you can see YouTube thumbnail, presentations, whiteboards, videos of different sizes, 1920 by 1018, or you, if you want, you can request uh, maybe a, TikTok, follow me, TikTok, TikTok Media Kit. It's got all kinds of stuff. TikTok Story. If you want to go in there, you can see the that vertical. And then you can go ahead and choose whichever one of these patterns you'd like to, to modify for your own self. It's absolutely amazing. And I'll also start taking a look at Adobe and how I use Adobe to create my videos as I'm starting to learn how to do that. So that's really amazing. So I've had a lot of fun. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. And I believe I will be doing this again probably about one o'clock tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow. All right. So take care and thank you so much for tuning in. This is Dr. Marjorie Lewis. Please, please, if you see this in the future, please subscribe to the channel, like the channel so that I can continue doing more of these as I have this time and opportunity. Thank you so much and have a blessed and wonderful day. Okay. So let's see. Let's end our stream.